quickly. Uh, this, this is the Basque country, very, very small population, very small country in North Spain, two, two million people, around two million people. 30 integrated healthcare organizations uh, at the time, and uh, 30,000 healthcare professionals. Um, and we, we already uh, full integrated uh, organization. And we, when we say uh, integrated organization, we, we call it in, in two main areas. One is what we call a structural organization, which we call IHOs, integrated health organization. And the other one, which in some, to me, is one of the most important, is the, the, the functional integration. And we mainly, we, we, we do it by uh, designing corporate clinical pathways at that time. So uh, we went through the these tools, the the maturity assessment twice, uh, I guess. And uh, uh, I must say that the the, the, the round picture is there. It's just, it means uh, like a, it's called soccer ball. It's quite quite round. And, and sometimes I go doubt if it, 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 our system is so so roundy in that sense. But, but probably after COVID nineteen, probably we. Uh, it deserves to be another uh, material assessment as well if, to see whether this round chart uh, keeps on. So, so uh, uh, we see as coaches uh, three areas when we did this: the structural governance, digital infrastructure, and population approach. And uh, we would like to learn from others and citizen empowerment, as Sophie mentioned. Uh, process coordination uh, is very, pretty much related with the uh, clinical pathways and removal of uh, inhibitors as well. So these are the, the areas we, we, we like to learn from, from others, and particularly we take more focus on the process coordination regarding always clinical pathways, if you can incorporate clinical pathways rather than local pathways. So we went to the hub, to, we went deep into the, the hub and we find uh, some reports, papers and, and great literature on process coordination. And we found this, this is Scottish approach to, to, to service designs. Um, and we thought that was an opportunity for us to, to learn more from, from them. Um, particularly this uh, technique or tool they, they're using there, we was called double diamond process. The, the name is quite sexy, isn't it? <laughs> so <laughs> probably some of the reasons. But uh, for us, it was quite important to, to learn a bit more about this 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 tool. So uh, we we learn from one of the processes they have in Scotland. It's called implementation in, in Midlothian with the Pathfinder program. Um, when we talk with them in order to, to learn a bit more from, from how they they improve to, to care frail patients by improving uh, pathways and empowering, empowering and involving patients uh, and professionals. And these last words, involving patients and, and professionals, was quite key for us, which is quite professional as maybe it's not such difficult. But patient is really challenged. It's quite difficult, at least for us. So as adopters, we try to learn from from school time. We had a webinar at that time in, uh, in April 21, and uh, transferring the, the learning to the contest, we explore whether the relevant aspect of Scottish uh, innovative practice was suitable for, for adoption in the Basque Country. We try to define the, the objectives of that improvement and work in the, in the logic model, defining the resources needed, the impact we, we wanted to achieve, and lastly, the, defining an implementation plan. So this was the, the objective design of a methodology to involve citizens in the design, redesign, and the scaling of processes and pathways in the Basque Health Service and its application in the improvement of the pathways for, in this case, multimodal patients. So we uh, 
built a working group in order to go through the logic model with uh, Sakiretsa, with Bass Health Service, uh, BioF, Bass Foundation for Health Innovation and Research, and Chronic Gune. So we learned from the logic model methodology from, from Optimedis, uh, which is a quite probably natural, but uh, it's a bit of difficult to understand at the, at the beginning. So it, because you, you start from the, from the last point of the, of the line, from the impact, and you go backwards. Um, I must say we are not pretty much used to that. So it's quite a challenge. So we define an impact, uh, then you, the outputs, the, out, the outcomes, the outputs you want, the activities and the, the resources. So most of the things uh, related with, with money. Uh, so this is a sample of when we did it, the, the, the exercise. So uh, it's, I don't know if you see in the, in the screen, but the impact was something like this one. Improving the quality of life of chronic patients and carers. Uh, and systematize the co-design of processes and decision-making tool with the health system, within the health system, which is uh, two uh, very powerful impacts. And from, from there, we went backwards up to the, the resources. I'm not, I'm not going to go into detail, but uh, it was a really challenging, and I must say, a bit difficult also. And we, we were not many people working in that uh, model. This is more in details. There are a lot of issues that uh, we, will, uh, we should work in order to get those impacts. So, uh, and after that, we went into the implementation plan what activities, what actors, what stakeholders, resources needed, and so on, and so forth. We, we reach up to this, this point in, in this exercise. So, uh, challenges as adopters. Uh, first of all, assess the feasibility of transferring the learning into the context. That's really, uh, I think, probably the main point. Don't start something that you already know is going to be near impossible to... to to get build, build long-term collaboration. We are still working with, with its Scottish <laughs> in order to keep on uh, doing uh, this, this process uh, apart from the Sirocco project. But this collaboration probably needs to, need, needs to, to uh, keep in time. And to explore specific topics in depth, uh, and I would say uh, in person rather than in three dimensions rather than two dimensions. Uh, it's, it's, it's good to see, it's good to hear, but it's better to feel. And that's feeling it only gets when you, you are working uh, around people and with people. And so build a concrete and agreed model of implemented project. Of course, uh, COVID-19 was a really a challenge and that really uh, uh, it was not good, uh, let's say, it doesn't, it didn't help anyway. Uh, some uh, reflections on the, on the process. Uh, the logic model uh, allows us ensuring the, the, the logic be behind the sequence of resources. Uh, the involvement of the correct stakeholders, maybe key element. Uh, the logic model needs time and an open-minded <coughs> attitude to make it a comfortable tool. Uh, I think a bit of training is, uh, is necessary on the, on the, on the tool. Uh, so I think it's crucial to be as much simple as you can uh, from the starting point. Uh, sometimes too many things to want to accomplish is, is, is really uh, not a good strategy. So too many, sometimes is too much. And due to COVID-19, uh, we had to set deadlines and uh, we are still working on it, as I mentioned before. And in our case, I must say, it's not, not, nothing uh, to be happy about, but the, the language is one of the <laughs> main problems in order to, to work with another, and it says, uh, languages and, and cultures. Uh, I think it's, uh, that's from my side, that's, that's the group working in, the, in this process. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay.